Exclusively for Spin Alt and Spin Southwest, my name is Ray Wingnut, and I'm here in the wonderful Gorilla Studios under the arches of the Dart Line north of Connolly Station in Dublin. And I'm here with Rossangano family, that's John, Morley, and God knows. And it's been a year now since they launched their debut album, Let the Dead Bury the Dead. And the album is nominated for the 2017 Choice Music Prize, and there's all sorts of adventures going on. Lads, how are you getting on? We're good, Ray. How are you? I'm great. Not too bad. Like. Good. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Listen We're very good. We're very <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's an improvement. It's getting better already. <laughs> so listen, it's, uh, it's brilliant to bring you here to Gorilla Studios to do a session. Uh, yeah, like my, my questions got wiped off the page pretty much when I was listening to you warming up because uh, <laughs> all my questions just seem so lame and stuff like that compared to the power of the music. But let's say, um, let's start off with, before we look at back at the year that was and the year since the album and stuff like that, mm. let's start with what you're doing at the moment. Are you in the studio at the moment? Are you like, are you mixing or what's the story? We're taking some, like, I think we're, we're taking some time off to just see where we want to go next. So that's that's where we are at the moment. So I mean, we're, we're not in the studio all the time, but the studio is one thing that you can you can totally remove it from what we do. So the studio is there. We go in every now and then and sometime come out with some lovely stuff, but we're not actively in the studio, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. But I heard uh, maybe a Twitter teaser the other day about dropping a new track or something like that. Someone was thinking out loud. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's what Twitter is nowadays, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're just thinking out loud, some you can obvious, say anything. <laughs> some obvious examples in the world are there, but that's, that's where people go to think out loud. We said we might drop a tune. We didn't say we were going to. <laughs> you know, like, it's all about building the hype up, bit by bit by bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe we should tell them the truth, though. We probably should, yeah. yeah. We, should. We, do, we do have a track. We do, we, we do have a track that will drop hopefully in like a month or so. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a different kind of a track, but I can't wait for you all to hear it. Brilliant. Yeah. Cool. Looking you forward to it. anything more? Yeah, I, I, uh, I suppose that track is um, for ourselves, like Merle said, so we are in the studio and we're making new music, but I think one thing that we're doing is we're, we're trying to enjoy the process mm. of making music and not... Uh, taking it extremely serious so it's kind of um you know every time someone writes a book uh, they write it chapter by chapter and they always go back and they re-edit what they're writing and i suppose what we're doing is the first draft so we're just seeing like hey does this tune work does you know does what lyrics work with this beat and uh, just trying to be as creative as we can at the moment but um i'd say it's going to be you know we're certainly n we don't feel any pressure to make a new album and have it out by the end of this year i don't think that's the right way to proceed for us so what we'll do over the next couple of months is drop a couple of singles and uh, the next one that's coming is like Merle said it will come probably in a month thereabouts and it's called i know you know and the lads, uh, I suppose, are talking about issues of mental health uh, and just maybe feeling feeling alienated. Um, and it's a track that, for us, I think we're extremely happy with it. We, we maybe produced it in a slightly different way than we normally would. Uh, we have a really good friend of ours and our sound engineer, Liam Marley, plays some bass on it, pretending to be Thundercat. It's really good. Um, and yeah, I think it's we're happy with that track, so that'll surface over the next kind of month or two. All right. Will it surface around Choice Music Prize time? Is this something that you're excited about? This Choice Music Prize coming up? Yeah, no, we we are really really excited about it. But I think what it is is that um, it's you know what, like it's an amazing thing. Uh, but when we made Let the Dead Bury the Dead, that was never the goal. If you of course so. The fact that, you know, it's there, it's more like, it's just a celebration for a lot of uh, talented people who worked really hard all year to do something. And it's more like, just like, hey guys, we all made amazing albums. Everybody who's going to attend, whether uh, that's someone who was on someone's team, you know, like whether th that person, you know, was uh, the person who mixed the album, you know, it's, it's just a celebration in the room. That's the way I'm, uh, you know, I'm looking at it because... You know, it's not gonna stop us from making music. It's, of course, you know what I mean. And also, our our so, uh, like the the tune that we're coming out with next, it's not exactly to be like, hey, 
check us check us out so that you can you know give us like a little nudge nudge to to get me to get yeah. any uh, brownie points or anything like that. It's more like we're gonna carry on making great music because that's what it's all about, really, isn't it? Because all the all the inspiration that came from making that the last album that got nominated didn't come from wanting to reach that goal. So of course, yeah. So and no, I it, mean, it and could maybe, but it might not as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I totally hear you. And let's look back at the creation of the album and the years since then, because it seemed to me like "Let the Dead Bury the Dead" was a big event in your lives individually. You know what I mean? And uh, just talk about the year that it's been since the album came out. Like, what were the live shows like? You know, there was sold out tours. There was appearances on other voices and stuff like that. It's been a pretty hectic year. There was South by Southwest and all this kind of stuff. It's been a pretty crazy year for you guys. Yeah, looking back on it, like just hearing you say some of those things, you kind of like, wow, it was it was actually a crazy year. And I love to say, to be honest, like most of those things weren't things that we were expecting when we made the album. You just wanted to make something that people would, would really resonate with, you know, in a way and would love. But then off the back of it, like I, the one thing that I remember is like the, the day we launched the album, we, we played a gig in Cork. And that's one thing that I think if you ask all three of us, that would be one of our, you know, favorite gigs. Like, because it was just, it was emotional. You could just feel like this many people showed up to a Ruth and Gano family album launch gig. It, it was, a, I wasn't surprised then, you know, of what happened then since that day. Mm. You know, because you're kind of like, well, you know, <laughs> that many people showed up that night and were singing songs that were released, released that morning. And they were already chanting those back to us that night. So it was like, there was something special about the album. Then, yeah, we, we, we went to South By, we went to Eurosonic and all these places and to see how people reacted to it as well. I won't lie, a lot of the time, it, it still hits you hard when you're like, lads, we, we made this in Claire, <laughs> you know? And then here we are in the middle of Texas, like going mad, you know, causing a riot here in, in, in an Irish pub. And then... Everything else, like every single gig that we play touring the album, it's been it's been amazing. I think that's the reason. Why. Sometimes you can put something out, and that could be your demise because you could put something like that, that 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 would kind of reassure you that, dude, this is not what you should be doing. Quit, quit this, and get a day job. Mm-hmm. I think let it there, bury it there, kind of did it. Quit your day job. Damn. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, no, no quit. Bernie's, Bernie's giving himself the choice for his area. You know? <laughs> he went down to part time anyway. He <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's like, dude, you know what? Invest more time in this. Less hours. And no, also, no. you know, because this is going somewhere. And I think if there is one thing I could take out of Lady Debbie there, it's like it, it, it reaffirmed that we are going somewhere with this thing we're doing. And we are doing the right thing. The music we're making is genuine. It's, it's coming from a real place. It's not something that we are fabricating together yeah. with, with, with a certain formula or anything like that. So, yeah. And I yeah. agree with you. And I think the response to that is also something that's, that's genuine. You know, people are genuinely connecting yeah. with music and especially connecting in the live show. And... John, how was the experience for you, like riding and surfing this energy of the live shows and the tours and stuff like that? Um, it's amazing. It it actually is amazing. <clears throat> I think we're we're quite um, we're quite precious about it because mm. we, you know, we're really considerate. I think about our music in terms of making sure that we keep it as honest or we stay as passionate as possible around the music. So. Sometimes people are like, God, you must rehearse all the time. And it's like, nope, <laughs> like we don't. Mm. Um, we kind of jam in the studio and stuff. But I think a lot of the time it's known when you're doing something too much. And a lot of the time we've done a lot of shows. Um, but we find that there's a line where it's kind of like we have to stay as energized by this show as the audience. Because if, if we're not, then the audience are going to feel it as well. Yeah. So we try and change the show as much as we possibly can. Um, but it's also something that, yeah, I think, you, you know, when you're saying, like, how do, how do you find it? It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, it, for me, it makes it very hard to go back to DJing. Because when you go back to DJing, you're like, you know, where are the boys? Like, where mm. shouldn't, shouldn't one of the lads be on top of that speaker, you know? Um, so... 
but it's it's been absolutely incredible and to actually see that your music is having an impact on people like when Murdy mentioned that show there in Cork the Cork show for the the launch mm. it it was 50-50 it, at any moment it, it could be like oh, yeah. god knows is going to dance or he's going to cry or the exact same from yeah. early and the exact same from myself and it's a really weird thing because you for us, we felt like I think we I do were, both, John. We, yeah, that like we all do. Yeah, and I think. But that particular show, we were kind of, you could feel it from the audience where they were like, "Geez, these guys are they're so emotional about it, about the the whole, you know, they're putting this music out there for the first time." Uh, and for us, I think that that's something that it's it's really important to us. So you obviously have to take all the opportunities that are being presented to mm. yourself. But you also have to be very careful where you're standing back and going like, how much is too much? Is this going to change the integrity of what we're doing? Mm. And I think that, you know, things work the best between the three of us when it's, when we're just like, we don't take the music that serious or we keep it within kind of, I don't know if this is going to make sense, but if we keep it within the Ross and Gano vibe. Yeah. So we very much understand what it is that we have to do or how, to, I think we understand how to change a room, mm. to change that energy in the room. And it's always, you know, like energy is something I've been fascinated with for years and years and reading about it. And then it's kind of like you meet, you know, the two personifications of, of energy. And it's, 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 a, it's a great team, I think, between the three of us where we know how to link up, we know how to, in the same way that, you know, if you went back to the 80s and if we were a hair metal band, like the singer knows to stand beside the uh, mm -hmm. the guitarist when he's doing the solo and lean against him, it's kind of like we all lean against each other in yeah. some kind of way to amp it up as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. and that's 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 the one thing where it's like, because John just mentioned it there, like we don't actually rehearse as much as you would think, but sometimes that's what makes, I think that's what makes our live shows interesting because if we, a lot of the time, we, pl we play risky shows. It could actually go either way, really. True. But it's that fear that keeps you going as well because it's like, lads, I don't know what G's going to do here. Oh, I don't know what John is going to do. That. Did he just mix that like that? Okay, that's good. You know, and I smile a lot, but yeah. like you see me on stage during while rapping, I'll be smiling. It's because I'm actually gassed that we pulled that off because <laughs> a lot of the time I'll be like, Wow, that actually worked. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. I mean, that's something that people say uh, uh, all the time. Like, you guys are so synchronized. No, that's the train. You can keep talking about. All right, I, I was like, is it rude to <laughs> talk <laughs> with bombs on us? It's not the train rude. doesn't move. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, train. pick up the train. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like they say that, like you know, you guys so synchronized. But I think it's it's literally. We read each other as much as people are watching us. We're yeah. watching each other in, in the moment. And like John said it best, like, you know, we literally live in that moment. Like, mm. as soon as we go on stage, we're in that moment, uh, you know, together. So it becomes like we're connecting. And when people see other people connect, it's like if I see two people walk, uh, you know, if, a, if people walk in a room, if I see two people talking, then I'm like... Why am I standing here on my own? Let me mm. talk to this person over here. Yeah. So then suddenly people start talking, and that's the way that we do as well. And I think when people see us connecting, they're like, "And the lads up there are having a good time, sure." Like, let's Why just get into yeah. the music. Yeah. So. so, like, and I think that, so that chemistry is, of course, crucial to any band, that, like any great band and stuff mm. like that. And I think you're three like really strong characters, very different characters and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think people are reacting in a big way. But you spoke there about being precious and like keeping the Russ and Gano vibe and stuff like that. But as it's getting bigger and bigger, the question is maintaining and stuff like that. And understanding that, hey, this has the potential to go anywhere and it has the potential to, to go anywhere in the world. Mm. And I think just your musical talent has the potential to pretty much achieve anything. I really yeah. believe that at the moment. But how are you, how are you, how are you, <laughs> how are you man maintaining and, and still... Like, are you looking overseas? You know what I mean? I mean, like, when's when's the overseas touring going to begin and stuff like that? You know what I mean? Is this something that you think about? Like, what what what's necessary to make that happen? Uh, I think the way to approach things is it's, it's all to do with levels. And one thing that it took us a long time to understand was what level are we on? And to constantly be checking and going like, hey, are we are we 
this good or because mm. sometimes your mates will tell you oh that was amazing yeah but you know that 10 minutes later they were like they're not as good as they were you know, <laughs> you know? so for us it's kind of always gauging like where are we and i think now you also have to kind of like not to get deep into the, the i suppose the philosophical side of it but you actually have to look deep within yourself so if two years ago uh, or even three years ago, when the first project that we ever did mm. came out, if we had really chased that, um, I don't think we were musically mature enough to follow it through. Mm. Uh, and it takes a while of, you know, sometimes in workshops, because we teach workshops, sometimes in, in workshops, the person who puts their hand up and is like, I'm a rapper. The first guy who does that, he's pretty good. But the one kid that you want to watch is the guy that says nothing for two to three, you know, kind of like times or sessions that you meet them. And then on the third or fourth one, when they actually step out, you're like, whoa, you are the star. Mm. So I think for us, it's kind of like we wanted to make sure that we're operating in a national capacity, that we're playing all over Ireland, that we're learning how to to play with each other, how to live with each other, mm. uh, how to interact, make the correct decisions for us so that when you try and bring it to another level up again, you're not intimidated by the people that you're meeting. If uh, someone from a record label had met us three years ago, we would have been, you know, like, Whoa. Uh, and now it's kind of like, okay, what have you got to say? Because we're actually, we've learned a lot ourselves. Mm. We're proud of what we're, we've been able to achieve ourselves and, uh, we're confident. We're now mm. confident in we know our show is good. We know that we can talk very clearly in an interview. Um, but I suppose the thing is we know where our skills are. Yeah. We know what aspects we've had to develop. So that's why we've been waiting and we've been building. And I think from kind of like looking at this summer forwards, we're always going to have our eye on Ireland because mm. that's where we're from and that's who we are. Yeah. But moving forward kind of from this summer it's all about getting the message overseas going to different countries uh seeing how they react to it will they react to it in the same kind of way we hope that they do but yeah i think it's it's taken a while to build the group confidence up do you know what it is yeah. is that um we're three very strong individuals as well and that's something that obviously we champion like we champion that about each other you know what i mean and um the thing is like we got together um in 2014 13 or well, like the very 13, first time oh, okay. that we ever met was 2000 and uh, we did a gig together was 2012, 2012. Yourself, yeah, yeah. and see that's a very long time and uh, there's a quote that i love uh that james brown's manager said um yeah books don't watch um uh, but yeah like uh he said like getting together is the beginning right staying together that's a process and working together that's the success and mm. to me i love that quote because you got to understand you got to give people time to gel you know what i mean and like musically it works because we have gelled you know we have actually lived shared life together you know what i mean we go on tour we actually like when we go to the studio now like it's literally just going in and vibing you know vibing yeah. turns into a recording you know exactly what's coming and you know you're almost like you're reading the other guy's mind and you're like oh yeah of course you know what i mean so that's something that helps us when we go outside of here because there's going to be loads and loads of people doing stuff but oh man there's times where i'm like oh no john's got that that's nothing john's got that that's easy you know or mm. vice versa with him earlier you know what i mean where literally that trust is there so i don't even have to look where where merley is ever on the stage that's because we've gelled you know what i mean i need to i don't even have to know what john's gonna play next i just know that it's gonna be sick so mm. but that's it took gelling yeah i think i think the one thing that kind of keeps me confident is knowing that we are all we're willing to learn you know and we, we never say that oh we've we've found it we've found it we've made it we're here now. So it's like, who's going to come and take us to the next level? No, if a person presents themselves and we feel like this person can actually take us to that level, then together, all three of us again, we say, does it work? Because we never actually sat down and say, when the last put out, put out the first album, um, they never sit down and say, Merle, do you want to join the band? We actually just, we, we just work together and we started performing together. 
then it became a band. So the same way where we never say that, oh, um, next year we're going to play UK, you know that? So, okay. You know, there, you know, you have dreams, we have ambitions, and we can't lie about those things. We do want to tour anywhere around the world if we can. But you don't want to force it either. You want everything to happen organically, just because that's why the band worked in the first place. So we want to keep kind of that pattern of things working that way, if, if it's possible. If it's not, then you know you can tweak things left and right and see what will get you there. Yeah, yeah, excellent answers, excellent answers. I have to say, that was, it was exactly the words I was thinking of actually, like of not forcing it and organically. And of course, mm. that that maintains a real fertile, creative ground. I think mm, where yeah. you just kind of, as artists, where you actually need to be at. You know mm. what I mean? It, you know what I mean? It, otherwise, it can turn into something grotesque if it is forced. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's just me looking at it. And a, I think if you, if you look at kind of, you know, if you look at a lot of the Irish bands that are around at the moment, the reason that they're, and I think it's it's always a great time for Irish music, but mm. it's an incredible right time now, yeah. for Irish music at the moment. Um, there are a certain number of bands there where lynched have never compromised, I think, in what they do in any regard and that's why you love them more because of that mm. the same with girl band even a band like saint sister who i think um like they could be so huge but they keep this kind of slightly atmospheric dreamlike and it, it's a little bit kind of melancholic mm. the whole time throughout their sound and it's it's groups like that that are willing to kind of commit and go you're committed to what you set out to do originally and then the industry is something that's completely different i think when like anything you know if if you're a professional soccer player you're going to have to understand the soccer industry uh, and that's something that we're trying to understand the music industry yeah. or we feel like we're getting a better understanding of it but it's never going to 100 percent control what it is that we do and again it's an interesting time in music as well where you're like oh that's what everyone else is doing do you know what let's go off and do something completely different and yeah. see how you get on doing it. And if if it fails, it's not the end of the world. Um, but if you find that sometimes you can carve out your own niche, I think, by taking that approach towards it as well. Yeah. Don't be afraid to take risks. I suppose that's the one thing that we, we have to remind ourselves all the time. Because yeah. sometimes you can get too comfortable doing what you, what's working as well. But every now and then it's worth taking a risk here and, and let people say, ah, that, that's terrible. Like, why did you even try that? And say, oh, so we just fun. We, we did again. no preparation for our for performance in a while. We don't even you know gotta what keep we're it fun. If it's not fun, fun, if it's yeah. not fun, then really, like, I don't know. I would, I would hate to be doing something then so it's a formulaic. Job. It's just like, dude, like, <laughs> the reason why this is an amazing thing that people go and do is because it's so much fun. Yeah. Well, you know I mean? and, and, and on that, let, let's say, like, that's a very simple and a beautiful philosophy of yeah. just like the one thing we want to maintain is the Russ and Gano vibe. Yeah. But what, let's say, there's a big gig tonight. It's in Vicker Street. This is, you know, Dublin, Ireland's premier venue. It's, just, yeah. it's an absolutely brilliant place and it means a lot to a lot of people. And uh, is tonight your first night playing in Vicker Street? It is. I've never been in Vicker Street. You've never been in Vicker no, Street? I saw Kendrick, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is big. So, what is the Russ and Gano vibe? Very, very simply. Should I start? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> okay. Can you feel the vibe in the room at the moment? Yeah. Yeah, that's the Russ and Gano vibe. You know, it's like the way we're talking now, you are in Russ and Gano family right now because it's become a conversation and we're all having a chat. We're having a chat. It's never going to be a case of like, okay, Ray, ask that question now. Hmm. Put on the shades. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> don't you know, ask that question. Don't ask, don't ask that yeah. question. By the way, Ray, before we start this interview, you can't ask that, okay? So we let everything happen in a way naturally. So we don't know like, if the majority of people in that venue tonight is, are going to be our fans. We don't know that. And most of the time, we don't know going into any venue if it's going to be... Unless we're playing Limerick, because you know that we're close yeah, to home. Yeah. So um, we're going to go on stage, and the one thing we rely on is our chemistry. If it's great, if it's there, then you're going to feel it, it's infectious. The, the crowd will get it. They will catch it like fever. They're going to catch it. And then you you can tell if you're in there, you're like, everything that's happening on that stage, you can tell that the crowd in their own way are channeling that. If that happens, then the Rizangano vibe. Do you know who, who knows the Rizangano vibe more than most? <laughs> who does? 
Do the man who asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. Nothing worse than asking a question and knowing the answer. No, I didn't know the answer. No, but, no listen, and that's, no, what, that's why you're here. Let me just say, for people who don't know uh, Ray and when he goes to gigs and, <laughs> you know, he's, he's someone that, like, when it comes to the Rusangano vibe, like, Rusangano vibe is basically, we give you our energy and you give us back your energy. Yeah, that's and it. And Ray literally... It, Ray starts the vibe. That's because I'm about to go drinking, like, straight after the interview. Like, you know I mean? No, 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 only joking. But, um, but thanks, thanks. But, um, but no, and that's why, that's why you're here. You're in Gorilla Studios to do a session and to capture that lightning in a bottle. And so. never want to, like, I think the one thing that we sort of are aware of, like, we never want to look down, even though a lot of times the stage is up, so people are below you but they're not below you no. so you never want to look down on the crowd that's you know that's sure. what we don't do we don't want to do that we actually want to go into the crowd and be with them so because it's there's no us without them there's n this whole playing live thing there's no point to it if there's no audience there that's gonna feel it with you so yeah, think um, about the name it's rusangano family yeah. rusangano in the shona language from zimbabwe means togetherness and family. Mm. So that's basically me. When we're all together, guess what? We're family. Yeah. So wherever we are, and that's the most amazing thing about us. We laugh about it all the time. We have performed for toddlers. We have performed for absolutely everybody. Very like elderly from, people. From, yeah. From yeah. all ages. <laughs> like, oh, we've done really funny, ridiculous gigs when we first started because some of them are we do we do fun gigs though. to be honest. Yeah. Some yeah. of those are very very memorable, and we would never forget that. But there hasn't been once where. We were like, oh, they don't have the recent kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's, you no, know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it literally is something that is amazing that they actually understand what Rusangano family means before they even they even enter the building. Once they're there, they're just like, oh, yeah, of course I know what the Rusangano vibe mm. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we played in oh, a garden center. Uh, we played outside a garden center and the person getting the big crowd that day was Nevin, Nevin McGuire, the chef, because he was cooking inside. Nice. But we, my, myself and G played outside to, I'd say, about seven or eight elderly women in deck chairs. And we were like, oh, how is this going to go? And what you realize is those are the makings of you. Because if you go into, like, you know, a 1,500 capacity venue and everyone's had a few drinks and they're somewhat, like, interested in what you do, You've already won. You yeah. can't mess this up. But like, you know, five women who have been on this planet for 70 years, they've seen a lot uh, and they're they're enjoying their day. And then this, you know, essentially a rap group from Claire arrived down and are like, now we're going to either ruin your buzz or, or create a buzz. And it was amazing because you had these five women that were all clapping uh, along to it and I think it's it's the early days it's things like that they're the kind of the making of the group mm. where we realised do you know what I actually don't want to be like uh, I only play to um, hipsters in baseball caps that's a very small proportion of, of people where you're like I want this to be for everyone like yeah. literally everyone if you I think you can play Kendrick to any person from any country of any age and they will go, there's so much merit in what he does. There's, yeah. it's, it's the same thing as showing someone, if you take a Picasso painting and you show it to someone, there's very few people that are like, nah, I don't rate that at all. Like when something is good, you just appreciate it. And yeah. that's what we're trying to that's aim it, for. Yeah. We're trying to go like, hey, you can take something... We we were you know we've talked about it recently, but I suppose hip hop wouldn't necessarily be seen as something that's highbrow, um, or that it has a load of artistic merit. Traditionally, that's how it was mm. maybe seen, and we're kind of like, why can't it? Why why can't we put it in there? Mm. Uh, yep, why can't we cement this with? Okay, we do, you know we use different tools than other people use, but there's absolutely no reason that we can't take our art form and go. This is, you know, this celebrates our our lives, our lifestyles, yeah. our friends, our community, family, our family, everything like that. And I think, you know, moving forward, it's something like we've got to a stage. That's what we've been doing up until now. And now it's kind of like broadening your vision a little bit yeah. where it's like, OK, Ireland knows us. Like if we can do this within Ireland, 
why can't we do it in the UK? Why can't we do it in Australia, America, Canada, mm. France, Germany, wherever? You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, I thought you were going to list every country going. in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to take this opportunity to big up my mom and all of our moms. All of our Hello, moms. Hello, how are you today? Were they the ladies in the deck chairs yet? No. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I presume all those ladies bought t-shirts and, and merch and everything like uh, that. This, this was, was pre-merch. This was definitely pre-merch. <laughs> um, but, uh, do you know, I, like, I think it was afterwards, I remember we were sitting down on the grass and we were just kind of chilling for a while afterwards and we were like, God, that was magical. That was brilliant. We just did really well there. It was there. fun in the sun. It was yeah. hot outside. It was, well. it was amazing. So there's been so many shows like that along the way and now you gotta talk about south by southwest though the the pub the irish pub mm. yeah that was that was one that was historical as well because yeah inside you had the irish vibe as well like that you know we have the best fans in the world whether it's football mm. whatever sport is playing if there's an irish crowd there you know that it's gonna go off it's going down so the, that's the thing is that we were in South by Southwest, which is the biggest festival in terms of like mm. whatever's happening, there's loads happening there. Um, and we were like, man, like, we don't know how it's gonna go. And all of a sudden, you have this pub filled with everybody who, uh, who is Irish 100%, and also, you know, you know yourself, we have loads of brothers and sisters all around the world, and everyone feels like, you know what. This is our day. It was around the time of uh, St. Patrick's Day as well. Mm. So everyone's like, yeah, I'm going to go represent. So ev there's like a full on Irish crowd in the pub. Isn't that one where you jumped out the window? It is the one. It is the yeah, one. Yeah, I saw, I saw, I remember <laughs> there's, there's footage of like of a window and then you could yeah. come through it and you jump around the street See, and then just back into it. It was a metaphor that we're breaking up. <laughs> 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 but uh, that's exactly why, that's exactly why I jumped out the window because. Man, the support inside the pub was incredible. incredible. Yeah. Possibly one of the... Uh, you know, yeah. I, I think it was an Irish pride thing of like, our boys are on. Yeah, Listen yeah. to this. You know, you, you got your Jay-Zs and that. You know what I mean? They, they were kind of like backing us like, these are our lads. And as soon as I jumped out the window as well, it's like the moment of like the American people going... Where, why are all these people screaming? Because like it, it, it literally yeah. like, it kind of stopped what was happening. Because in... There was different bars and everything around where we were performing, but it seemed like for that moment, all eyes were on mm. the Irish pub. Mm. And for us, that was one of the, I guess I'll never forget that moment, really. Mm. And you could nearly feel from the from the people that were in the bar, so who were kind of looking out towards the street, you could nearly, feel, like there was nearly a sense of smugness, as in, Tolto! Like, it, it really yeah. was, it was a special moment for us. And, and again, the fact that you had so many of the Irish bands, like, that we went over with, it was, you know, it didn't, you didn't, it didn't feel like individual bands. It just felt like a big collective of people yeah. where it's like, we're here to try and make some kind of statement, do you know? And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was definitely a very but Putting those moment. vibes into the world it can't be underestimated, you know what I mean? Like, you, when you break it down, you know, those vibes are put into the world by a DJ producer and two rappers. You know what I mean? And this is like this, this Russ and Gano thing is essentially boiled down to, to three musicians, like in the middle of just a, a brilliant adventure. You know? like, so it's brilliant to get you here in Gorilla Studios today and for the gig tonight in Vickers Street. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. That's thanks a million for coming in. Thank as you. The, as the train <laughs> goes Maybe overhead. The train, thanks. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Thank you, and Ray. thanks to Owen and thanks to Spud, the amazing Spud is at the controls, sure. and Ian Shout as well. Shout out Spud! And Dan Doc O'Connor is here as well. Denise Chell is here as well. She's, uh, yeah, exactly, your biggest fan. <laughs> Listen, um, thanks a million for being here, and uh, yeah, let's do it. Excellent. Let's get cracking. Rusangano family. Gorilla Sessions. Big up man like Ray Wingnut. And big up all the crew. Yeah, hold up. Yeah. That's not allowed. You can't say that that's not allowed. You can't say that that's not allowed. And guess what? I said it out loud. That's not allowed. You can't say that that's not allowed. You can't say that that's not allowed. Then guess what? I said it out loud. 
Listen to me, my wish, baby. All that old school PC, better miss me. Cause we're back when y'all was on topic. I was busy being an African baby. Playing in the sand, bare feet, no blisters. Now my feet freeze when I walk like hipsters. Didn't get wrapped till 20 or 3. Why am I still trying to sound like Piggy? I wanna be that fella like Gucci. Who's gonna introduce you to Djibouti? You think that with the genius of our time, somebody might just find a better use of the mind. Said I wanna help their poor, make a difference. Maybe I can end these wars. When I get paid, I buy my own words and turn it out to the charity box. Tea in the pot, tea in the pot. Y'all better know I got tea in the pot. Sunday, Monday, Friday. Any day in my yard, there's tea in the pot. Tea in the pot, tea in the pot. I got tea for the whole team in the pot. Ball in the pot. Well, my name is John Makes Rhythms. It's ketchup, cause I don't like mustard beats. No disrespect to the man. Skep say the best, that's not me. What's in your mug? That's not team. Where's the lions? Where's the berries? Flavors, no berries. The lads, go on the men. Amen. Amen. It's not S Russia, it's God knows the jumper. Could have been a pullover, but I left Sheffield. If that went over your head, then put down your hood, put down the guns, pick up the funds, build up the vibe. Car front base, but your man's still a Christian. Big Yo. nasty warm me about pagans. Tea in the park, tea in the park. Y'all better know I got tea, tea in, in the park. Sunday, Monday, Friday. Any day in my yard, there's tea, tea in the park. Tea in the park, tea, tea in the park. I got tea for the whole team tea in the park. Every know everything is falling apart. Me and I give thanks for the tea in the park. Limerick, like a five line poetry, but there's nothing funny about this kid. Dope MC, don't know from the street. Eyes on the throne, like a son of a king. Prince of the game, Assassin's Creed. EB's beast with Assassin's Creed. Block competitions, out of the sea. Every time I made that tea, pop bleed. Who's that picking on my window no frame? frame? Well, I get that pick at this tea proclaim. When I play a part in the sea code, then come take a seat at the cables in. Watch me pour some tea on your mug. Your face fell up the truck. <laughs> Yo. Better watch that smirk up with some tea, tea in the park, tea, tea in the, the park. park. Yeah, better know I got tea, tea in the park. Sunday, Monday, Friday, any day in my yard, there's tea in the park, tea in the park, tea in the park. I got tea for the whole team in the park. Every know everything is falling apart. Man, I give thanks for the tea in my park. Grand job, what? Grand job, do I grand job? Got a million rhythms like a green screen. Got a lot, got a dog, got a music, got a dog, and I only see top dog. Hate what's going on, dog? Okay, then can you do the pop then? Chop if you chop then. Simon and Simon, and these words sign on, sign on. Classic like go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. I could go in the go, but the bottom I keep. The floor, but then I won't keep it bottled up like bunny. Go on. I your top, let up my AO top, put my heart out to you, make it as well top. I love picking and back in the city, living city, in the city, you will see me riding in the inner city. I'm G, I'm P, I'm E. Black as a one of you, no bleach cream C, such a deep blue C, you won't find the MC. You think it's Damien, the way I make them see. I be long hair like David and Molly's dress. Been like it, you can ever say I'm very stressed. Trying to make you see like a couple and a row with a baby in the brown. There's weather in the crowd at the bottom of the door. I gotta make my proud. So, hate some of my said you told me out loud. What if it's your hope for me? What we must do to take it is off of me. I'm tired of the lies and the mockery. It's got me feeling like I'm in a bus for free. It's substitute for something much better. If that's true, then I really gotta like to read. Then follow the book or like to the letter. I bring my words to life like letters. Cause when the mic sound, I'm a night con. Do it for the lost ones like Mike Brown. A verse for the young ones in my hometown. Blueprints for the upcoming I'm the lion on the island, on the underground. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm Matthew, I'm chasing. I am Bubba J. I'm my inner city fan with the same, same difference. difference. Stick to the vision and we we'll lose interest. I could never get the comfortable, but I'm exploring all I had to do. It's the end of the month and the bills are due. Can I make a living out of making jewels? But I feel whenever knock me out, I got a lot on my side. Money I will overcome doubt and be on the crowd. And I do it shout. for the struggle, for the people. For the migrants, living illegal, do it for the struggle, for the people. The abandoned the refugees, man, I do it for the struggle, for the people, for the migrants, living illegal, do it for the struggle, for the people, for the jobless refugees, do it for the struggle, for the people, for the migrants, living illegal, do it for the struggle, for the people. The abandoned the refugees, man, I do it for the struggle, for the people, for the migrants, living illegal, do it for the struggle, for the people, for the jobless, damn and homeless. So I'm very hungry, up early, never had a black baby, but I'm so legendary when I'm a kind of. Man, he said to me to be getting when I go but don't do it for everybody got the best lines with the Bible still got the best verses Been tempted, yeah, man, man I had urge it. But I still believe in the God of many chances And am I the only one who seems to think that all those rights should I stay on branches? Killing the chosen with the, the, the dances Get the YouTube, that's what they ever dances Never for the money, any funny that I'm living Cause they don't the dances Got a big dream, but I still believe in a God who answers Don't you? Why not? Still time, but we not I remember what you did in the semi Become my family Now I deliver the fire like I said in matches Breaking up about the murder with a safari But I'm Mr. Kano's never have been sad Hard to offer guidance for your patience I probably would never have even made it Out to trend all this for your kindness I owe you a lot from looks So I wanna rock right now But rock right now All I wanna do is rap right, right now. now I wanna pop right now But rock right now All I wanna is hip hop right now I wanna rock right now But rock right now All I wanna do is rap right now I wanna pop right now But rock right now All I wanna is hip hop right now So... Thank you.
I get bigger. Gorilla sessions. We are Roots and Gano family. Let the dead bury the dead is still out now. Cop that wherever I choose. Spotify, yeah. listen to it, stream it. Live with it. Live with it. Compost. Anything you find in the trash can. Cut and recycle. recycle. To convert yard cause it cash it. Clean the kids out of nonsense. Leaving the majority of heads It's upside down. I shine by my absence. Wanna be kind of told me with an accent. Who's a guy? No, no resango. Don't be a waste man. Don't be recycled. Recycle. That's like told in the YouTube comments. comments. I do it for the art, not the commerce. And I took a dog off. Oh, Marley. Marley. When I say I wanna make a couple bars. And I took a two dogs. Who made dog? When I said I wanna be sly and raw. Waste man. Rusangano. Not Rusanga. Rusangano. Not Rusango. Not Fernando. Fernando, not Rastangano, it's Rusangano, Rusangano. Stories I can't tell, should I keep it in my heart or my brain cell? Yeah. But if I give it to the place, I guarantee you sell it, but it doesn't please nowadays, that's too pretty well. well. Oh. It gets started when it's getting in, but I wanna get a better job, but my, my name, name ain't fair. fair. So I said it for weeks that I bought space And be the roller coaster in your fun fair I will walk so hard till they can't compare yeah, me no one. I will do everything you can like Noah But I believe in getting it back twice like Joe But I'm reason I can't stop It's part of the heat comes and all of that we talk above yeah. Now I'm all about redemption songs that I bought But I'm early from Togo citizen by law oh. Me? Not everybody see my daddy was a refugee, so I'm free. I know a lot of people pay to have this. I play the seal them by the time they find it. When the end of the tunnel comes, seals and I I cry for the souls who die to find peace. I mean, a lot of people hate to practice. So me being average, 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 and I reply like this. I don't have to be like you. Never. I don't have to be like you. Never. I don't have to be like you. I look like you to be cool like you. You don't have to be like me. Never. You don't have to be like me. Never. You don't have to be like me. I act like me to be grand like me. Because we're all unique.